Good morning, class 9. So, if you remember the previous lecture, I started chapter 1, that is, understanding our environment. I told you why you are studying this particular subject in class 9. I told you what is environmental science. Okay. I also told you the various problems that mankind is facing in the environment. So, I discussed all the problems with you. Now, we will slowly try to understand how do we mitigate or overcome these problems, right? So, whatever I told you in the previous class, uh, you must have understood that the root cause, whether it is deforestation or global warming or pollution or loss of biodiversity, whatever problems we are facing today in the environment, most of the problems drop down to one common cause. What is that one common cause behind all problems? It is man. It is overpopulation. Deforestation, why is it occurring? Because man's population is rising. Why we are losing biodiversity? Because we are clearing the forest so that man can make his settlement area or new agricultural land. So whatever problem we, when we try to understand the depth, the root cause, behind each and every problem is overpopulation. So what needs to be done if we want to control the problems in the environment? What needs to be done is we need to control human population. We have to prevent this population explosion that is occurring especially in the developing countries. Countries like India, what is happening people don't understand they are still illiterate people in the village areas, in the rural areas of countries like India, where they give more preference to large families. They want to have a very big family with lots of children and that gives rise to poverty and unemployment in the country. We need to educate the people that it is always wise to have a very small family. The smaller the family, the better you can take care of your children, there will be lesser poverty and uh, the problems in the environment can be definitely tackled if the population can be controlled, right? So, a root cause behind each and every problem in the environment is overpopulation, right? Now, what we are seeking for today is a sustainable world. This may be a very new word for you, sustainable world. What is the meaning of sustainable? Sustainable, to sustain. When I say sustainable development, earlier we were only bothered about development. How we can grow financially, economically, how we keep growing. But we were never bothered about when we grow and develop, how it was damaging the environment on the other side. So we were not bothered, we were not catering to the needs and requirements of the environment. So today we have come up with a new word that is we talk of development but we talk of sustainable development. What is sustainable? A development that will meet the requirements of the present generation without compromising the ability of the environment to also meet the needs of the future generation. You must be knowing that we are all dependent on one earth. This earth is common for us and for the next generations to come. They will all survive on the same resources on this planet. But the way we behave today, the way we destroy nature today, the way we try to fulfill all our needs and demands, we behave as if we are the last people and there will be no other people coming to earth. But that is wrong, right? So what happens, what sustainability says is to cater to all your needs, whatever needs you have today, you cater to your demands, you cater to your needs, but also to keep in mind that the same planet will be there for the next generation. The next generation will also be dependent on the same resources that we leave behind for our children. So what we need to do is conserve. We need to conserve the planet. We need to conserve the resources. We need to conserve the forest, the water, the soil, everything for the next generations to come. That is sustainability. It does not mean that we do not fulfill our needs. 
right? We definitely fulfill our needs of food, clothing and shelter, but at the same time, we do it in such a manner that we leave the resources in a healthy way for the next generation also. So there are some basic principles that sustainability talks about. What we can do as students and teachers and individuals, what we can do is we can follow the four R's. What is the meaning of four R's? You all have must have heard about this. Reduce, refuse, recycle, reuse. Okay? Reduce. Reduce your consumption of resources. Reducing your consumption. Consumption here does not mean eating. Consumption means the way we use resources, the way we buy resources and we also waste. So as sensible consumers, as intelligent consumers, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to reduce our commodity consumption. Only then will the resources in the environment be safe for the next generation. Refuse, say no to wrong products. Like we use, uh, use and throw products. That is a very, very wrong product. Something that you buy and use it once and you dispose it, you throw it away because it's no longer useful. Those products are wrong because they damage the environment. When you throw the product, it is creating waste and that waste cannot be managed because they are non-degradable waste. Most of them made of plastics, they are non-degradable. So that is something wrong we are doing. So again, as a sensible consumer, what kind of products will I buy? I will buy products that are durable, that I can use again and again and again and not dis dispose it after one use. That is to say no to wrong products, refuse. Recycle, we all practice recycling. Okay, whatever commodity like the book that I'm holding in my hand, paper, plastics, aluminium, tin, all these things, we can collect it from our houses and give it to people who take it to the industries for recycling. So let's take a simple example. If I take this book into account, paper can be recycled seven times. Virgin paper can be recycled seven times. So what happens when I send commodities for recycling? If I recycle the paper seven times, it goes to the industry, comes back to me again. I am preventing the cutting down of trees. I will not have to cut down new trees to make paper. So I'm saving the environment. So all those commodities that we collect as waste in our house, if as again aware consumers, we send it for recycling, we are actually protecting nature, right? Then reuse. As I told you, buy durable products which can be used again and again. Don't buy products which are one time use. So if you follow the four tenets, the four R's, then you are a very aware consumer and you are saving the environment and we can move towards sustainability. The second one says sensible use of renewable resource. Let's try to stop using non-renewable resources and we should be more dependent on renewable resource. Resource which we use but it keeps coming back in nature like solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy. These energy resources will never get exhausted and they are zero pollution. They do not create pollution. Whereas if we use conventional non-renewable energy resources like coal, petrol, diesel, they create a lot of pollution and they also get exhausted in nature. So mankind today should be more dependent on renewable resources, right? And then it says, number three says, keeping with the absorptive capacity of the global sink. Sink means what? Sink means where your waste disappears create so much of carbon dioxide into the environment that the trees can take in. Do not create so much of waste in the environment that the earth cannot hold. Don't exceed the carrying capacity of the planet. As human beings, we are creating so much of poisonous gases, so much of waste that the earth is not being able to handle and tackle so much of uh, impure impurities around it. So we have to try to minimize the generation of waste. 
that is the meaning of remaining within the absorptive capacity of the earth let the earth absorb the waste that we generate so minimize your generation of waste and the last one it says prevent pollution all these uh, incidents that are occurring around us global warming acid rain the depletion of the ozone layer is because of pollution that mankind has generated if we want to overcome the problems of global warming acid rain we have to be aware that we do not create so much of pollution if we follow these principles of a sustainable world then we can save the resources not only for ourselves not only for our future but for the future of the uh, the next generation that is to come this is an idea on sustainable world and then in the next class i will be discussing with you about different environmental problems and its mitigation measures thank you class